I'm Janice Robinson Celeste, your host and publisher of Successful Parenting Media. Now, I want you to share this broadcast with all of your friends and followers. If you have questions, you can share them with us by posting in the comment section on Successful Black Parenting's Facebook page. Now, if you do that early, and I will try to get to you and answer as many questions as possible while on the show. But if I don't get to your comments and questions, we'll do our best to answer them after the show. So again, welcome to Back Talk. Today's episode is with Ebony Cruz, and I want to introduce her. She is the woman who created the Professional Woman's Escape Plan to guide other female entrepreneurs down the path of freedom. Welcome, Ebony. <laughs> Okay, so you guys on Instagram can't see her right now. I don't know if you can join in on Instagram. I don't know if you can do that at the same time. Um, Ebony, we didn't talk about that, but if you can, you can do that. Well, feel free if you know how to connect in so they can see your face too. But, you know, Instagram broadcasting is new to us. We're just trying this out and see how it works. But um, I want you guys to learn about this. So I thought this was important because so many of us hate our nine to five jobs. And I remember sitting at one job a couple of years ago in the parking lot at lunchtime, right? Feeling like a runaway slave. Like I just wanted to go. I did not want to go back in after lunch. And I was like, please God, whatever you could do, get me out of this. I did not want to be there. So tell us, Ebony, how you successfully escaped the corporate rat race to be a full-time entrepreneur. Let me see if I can add you too. Okay. Well, there you To, to ensure that you are financially set when you do take the leap. So I'm going to make sure we're not getting any feedback on my end. Sorry about that. That was my end. Oh, okay. We're new to this part, so I got I to gotta figure all this out. So I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> we are figuring this out as we go. We're going to do this more, and I'll get better at this part. I know this part. I'm learning this part, but go ahead. <laughs> well, you know what? That is actually perfect because that's how it is when you're figuring out how you're about to escape. So um, for me, I actually uh, worked in um, government. Um, I used to do a lot of political campaigns. My last campaign, everyone thought it was the most successful campaign. And why is this girl quitting her job, right? Um, so I worked for the city of Tampa. We um, won the mayoral campaign, first lesbian mayor in the Tampa. Made a lot of headline news. You know, it was like, girl, your career is booming, okay? And I was just so not fulfilled, you know, um, with the bosses that, that some are men and some women that look just like you, um, who just devalue you or just treat you just disrespectfully. And, you know, you're supposed to deal with it because this is how you pay your bills. This is how you put food on your table, et cetera. And so that first year, and I was a little bit backwards, I went from entrepreneurship to a job and then back to entrepreneurship, right? So that's why my mom was like, you crazy girl. And people ain't gonna tell you what to do. <laughs> So from the moment I got in, um, um, I started working and it just did not feel right in my spirit, just from the environment to, you know, my time flexibility wasn't there anymore. And then just being able, being told what to do was kind of rough for me. Right. Um, and so what made me really kind of take the push is that I really tried for about two years and it was a lady that was my peer. African-American woman, roughly about my age, um, was my superior. And she made the first six months of my life miserable at that job. Like she, the crazy part about it is HR suggested that I go to their psychologist to make sure that I was okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know nothing is wrong with me. This lady is insane. Um, so I, I, you know, I did everything protocol. And after that moment, and that psychologist was like, it sounds like your boss is a little intimidated by what you know, and your skill set. And so she's never going to allow you to really live out loud, live in your purpose, show your skill set, because that's going to outshine her and she doesn't want that. And so, and I'm sure many of you can relate to that, to where you know you were up next for that position or that promotion. You know that that salary request that you asked for should be yours. However, there's one person between you and getting that increase and you have to make that person like you or whatever. And um, I just said, no, I'm not gonna do that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
build out my two year plan as to how I'm going to escape. So um, I started um, sacrificing some of my nail appointments, y'all. I was hard to do that. <laughs> um, even some of the stuff like dinner night with the teens. And, you know, I started sacrificing and doing more stuff at home to ensure that I had funds for when I was about to take the leap. Because at that time, it was a little bit harder before COVID hit to get financing for your small business. So, you know, I had to create my own um, financing. Um, so um, I did that two year plan um, and I would put up put up money as well as pay off bills. So my goal was to only have a mortgage and a car payment when I decided to walk off of my job. And um, and. Yeah. And so that's that's exactly what I did. Um, and, and during that time, you know, I hate to tell you all, sometimes it is tough to to not want to go out with friends, to not do that family trip, to not go on vacation. You see everybody living their life on social media and you're like, dang, I want to live like that, too. <laughs> I'm not ready to sacrifice yet. But ultimately, the sacrifice you make today will determine where you're going to be tomorrow. Absolutely. So you said two things. A lot of times your boss is intimidated by you. I had at least two jobs. I had one um, when I was going to get my master's degree where the um, vice president who I reported to said, you know, you don't need a master's degree for this position. And because I knew I was going to be leaving soon, I said, who said I'm getting a master's degree for this position? Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Know? So that was one. And then I had a boss and she was, um, she had some issues and I didn't know because when I first started there, she was out on maternity leave and it was great. Like without her, when she came back, all hell broke loose. Right. So, and she was totally intimidated by me. And, um, she thought that she would put me in a public forum. So she, to, um, cause she thought I would embarrass myself because she didn't know my skills. Right. <laughs> Right. So she had me um, speak before all of the staff, like 44 people, the vice presidents, presidents, everything, board, and present a workshop, basically. I, I killed You killed it. Workshop. You killed it. I you look it. like you killed I it, too. I was sitting over there like this. Right. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and she had to give her workshop the next day, and I'm sitting there like. Hmm, no. Top that, man. <laughs> no. So I get it. But, but you know that's exactly what happens and they can make your life pure hell not to mention if you're a mom and you want to be home with your kids because that was your catalyst right can you tell us yep. a little bit about that Yep. So um, the 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 moment that really made me just say, hey, I'm out of here um, was I lost my child. I was uh, roughly about five and a half months pregnant. Water broke early and um, during that process, I was supposed to be in the hospital for roughly up until the end of the pregnancy, but we didn't make it to the end. My my son um, decided to just be my, my guardian angel. You know, I can honestly say I truly have a guardian angel, right? And um, so before then, um, pretty much all of the women that were in leadership roles um, either were either, either white or black or lesbian. And no offense against lesbians. However, no one had children. And so my importance of I have to make the morning, you know, coffee with mom or, you know, um, the play, the Thanksgiving play with kids or, hey, mom, I'm about to be a senior. You know, you got to come by and do the senior like those moments meant the world to me when for them, they're like, you're going to you're going to be late in the office for that. And yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go support my children. I only get one set of kids, you know, that's it, you know, and, and I can go through numerous jobs with this one set of kids. They are going to support and love and be with me regardless of what you all have going on. And so um, during that time, we were launching, it was um, called the Economic Advisory Committee for the city of Tampa. So it was like the eight year plan of how we're going to um, decrease the economic disparities in the city. Um, so I was placed on this task as like you, that I wasn't going to be successful with this group of people. Okay. And my personality, you know, is a little out there. It's not all studious and stuck up. You know, I'm going to use some slang. I'm a Southern girl and, you know, I'm going to be me. And so the other challenge is that it was virtual. So they were like, she's not going to. We're going to see how she does this. So I took some crash courses in Zoom to really learn how breakout rooms work, how to make a nice networking event online, what I would want to see if I was a participant. And um, I did that. 
worked with some of the most people I probably would have never, ever been in the same room with to put this economic plan together, even write the final report. Um, and so at that time, my director was like, you wrote this? I said, I'm, right. I'd like, I'm not an idiot. Like, I just, you know, pretty girls don't have to be dumb. You know what I mean? We know how to cook, sure. clean. We like, <laughs> come on. Um, and so she actually took the credit for that, ironically. Oh, but no. during the press release, I remember um, one of the doctors and one of the, the field um, regional, the, the guy that I got a lot of the data from, he gave me, he was the only person that said, without Ebony, we would not have been able to get this done. I'm so I'm grateful for that. And um, so after that, she would ask me to continue writing stuff, but that was not in my job description. So I was like, no, um, you can write it yourself. And, um, you know, I can like lay a set of eyes on it, but I'm not going to be the one writing back and responding. And you're not giving me like that credit. Obviously, I didn't say it that way. I was very studious when I said it. Um, so we kind of butted heads. She dangled this new position over my head and was like, hey, if you do this, if you can prove to us for the next six months, you know, we'll probably see about comp compensation. I'm like, do you really think for the next six months, I'm going to give up time flexibility with my family. I'm going to work two positions and not be paid. And then I have to wait till you say, you know what? You're worth another 10,000. We're going to give you another 10,000. They're doing you a favor. Like they're making you all this extra, like jumping hoops, right? Okay, I get it. Right. I'm supposed to be happy. So I was, I said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. So I remember our last conversation was a very heated one. And she told me that, you know, I thought more of you as a leader. I thought you would be more of a leader um, and recognize opportunity. And I, I said, well, you know what? I'm not going to say your name. I said, you know, honestly, I thought the same of you. I thought you were a very powerful woman that could really change my life. And I keep forgetting that my source is not you. You were a resource that God, my source, provided for me to be able to do what I'm doing. This is just a resource that God said, here, I'm going to give you this. And this resource is no longer helping me. This resource is no longer fulfilling to me. And she said to me, what does that mean? What does that mean? I said, you have a JD. You know exactly how to read between the lines. You understand exactly what I mean. This is not fulfilling to me anymore. And I remember, um, like, all hell pretty much broke loose via email. You know, they were like, she is just insubordinate. And it's like, I'm not insubordinate if I'm not going to lower my standards to do what you want me to do. So roughly about three days, four days later, my water broke. That was probably my stress level was up here. Never in any of my pregnancies had I ever had an early water break. None of the, like, a healthy pregnancy. And that, I want to say week and a half I was in the hospital, no one from my job ever reached out to say, are you okay? How's the baby? You know, we hope you're all right. No one ever reached out. No one. And so when I was laying in that hospital bed, and I remember after going through the actual uh, because regardless if your child lives or not, I didn't know that I was going to have to push my son out. Right. Wow. And so I remember my son passed away and 32 hours later, I gave birth. They left my child inside of me um, for 32 hours before they decided to really induce me and push me in labor. Like I remember when I felt the last movement that I knew of. And when I was sitting there, I'm, you know, I'm looking at my mom in the room. I'm looking at my dad in the room. You know, I'm looking at baby dad in the room. I'm looking at all of these people. And I'm on this table, you know, I'm on this table. And it's, at this point, it's a critical situation because, you know, I could have also lost my life considering how long my child stayed inside of me, uh, uh, you know, deceased. And I said, when I get out of this hospital, when, when the Lord allows me to get out of this hospital, you are going to not only quit your job, but you are going to launch this program that you set on for about two years and encourage and push other women to do the same thing. Those degrees that we paid for and we're not getting paid our worth for, you know, take that skill set and turn it into a business to where you can teach those coming up behind you how to do what you do, how to get through nursing school. That's a guy. That's a book. You know, how to um, navigate corporate America. That's another podcast. That's another book, whatever, you know, how to take your skill set and turn it into a sustainable yet profitable business because your service 
and I'm going to say your purpose, because that's what it is. We just got educated, but your purpose mm -hmm. is meant for others to learn from you and then implement and make money. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to create. We're supposed to be providers. That's what the Bible tells us to do, create and provide, multiply, right? And if you haven't heard that, Dr. Moss Monroe is one of the best teachers I've ever heard in my life to break it down. And so... I uh, extended my leave. I took all of my leave. And I remember they were calling me saying, Ebony, when are you planning on coming back? I'm like, I just lost my child. <laughs> like, can I just give me some peace? Like, let me digest what just happened to me. Let me digest my, at the time, three-year-old, not understanding why her baby brother didn't come home. Let me, let me process how I'm going to continue to be a mom Right. And still not every day break down because my strength and as parents, our strength are our kids' strength, right? When we're, when we're crying, they're crying. When we're sad, they're sad. So our strength is their strength. And um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to use all of my time. I'm going to exhaust everything. And I'm going to go in that office and say, I resign effective immediately. Wrote a beautiful resignation letter, you know, very well-spoken. I um, even gave them a lot of the PDFs, the PowerPoints, the plans for upcoming events that I was already working on because I'm like, what's the point of me taking this stuff? I'm not going to be devious because I know God has better for me. And, and I resigned. And when I resigned, I did not share with the news. I didn't, you know, because at that point that was an appointed position. So I'm like, I don't, I don't want this to go out and someone else write something different than what I'm feeling and how I feel. They're going to make their own rooms. I want to share why I left, you know, and I did just a, a small, you know, Facebook live just saying, choosing you, choosing you is the ultimate decision that you can ever, you can, you can make for yourself. Choosing to put you first over anything in any job is one of the most hardest decisions to make because we feel we have to accommodate others feelings but the moment i chose me i have not gone without an opportunity without a contract without a new student without i mean i've been traveling more than i have with a job and i'm kind of like where is this money coming from <laughs> but it has been the most the best decision ever in my life well i'm happy that you found success and congratulations on that i'm sorry you had to go through all of that um, with your, your job because jobs definitely can stress us out to the point where we're feeling it physically. So I, I am so sorry you had to go through that. Um, I do want to tell you that, you know, I, I know this has happened to a lot of us who are watching. Um, I know this is a common thread, the stress that your job can put on you. It's difficult to go in there with even a positive mindset. We've even seen memes about it, people sitting in their cars that are hilarious, you know, right? <laughs> Because they don't want to go and right. they're pretending because they see somebody and they just leave me alone. I'm in my car trying to get my piece before I go in there. <laughs> I've been in that situation. I have. And it's not fun. And so, I you know, I always had, like, my own businesses, usually in between jobs, on the side, that kind of thing. But it's nothing like running it full time for yourself because you too right. truly do get a sense of freedom. Well, you have freedom and you can schedule things yourself. So, for the people who are listening that are dreaming of leaving their nine to five, but those bills are keeping us chained to the ground, how do they know when they are ready to take the leap? Because you made sure your thing, your goal was just a mortgage and a car payment. But how does the average person really know when they're ready to take the leap? So when you can add a space or you can um, financially outsource those tasks that hold you back, because we all have tasks and skill sets that we're not great at. So accounting, that isn't my jam, right? That is not my go to. OK, bookkeeping, um, PR for myself, it's not my jam. So when you're able to. Look at your outline of your business. And this is very important to look at. What is this GVP? I call it your greatest valuable proficiency. What is my GVP? So if my GVP is cooking and or my GVP um, could be uh, teaching leadership. If, if whatever that skill set that I'm amazing at that I could do with my eyes closed, that's what we first determine. And then from there, you determine how am I going to make this lucrative? Am I going to teach others? Am I going to just create a book? Am I just going to write a book? Am I going to start a podcast or a blog? Or is this merchandise? Is there an online course I can create? How am I going to turn this 
valuable proficiency of mine into a actual sustainable business. All right. And so once you figure that out, then you plug in where these outsourcing fees are going to come from, because that's the fastest way you're going to get there. That's why that budget makes the world of a difference. At this point now, you're used to living on 40%, 30% of your income, maybe 50% of your income. Maybe, you know, for me, it was 40% of my income. At that point, I was used to living on 40% of my income. So when I left my job, there are things that I didn't, I didn't have to have, you know, I didn't have to have every weekend going out with the girls for brunch. I didn't have to have that anymore. Matter of fact, come to my house, let's brunch, everybody bring a dish. Okay. <laughs> You know, I didn't have to do that. And so when I got to a place to where I was receiving more clients versus me putting out more and outsourcing, then I knew, okay, now I'm set up. Now I have to run this team. I have to run this team like the boss I complain about. I got to run this team like the person I wish my manager could be. So how do you run this team effectively and still continue to make money? And I'm that's like, not what, like the boss you complained about them. Not no, no. <laughs> right. So I got to do everything different. Right. You know, and so when you can financially see and I'm, I keep going back to finances because passion isn't going to pay the bills. You know, the love for your tasks isn't going to pay the bills. I keep going back to financing to make sure that you have set up your space and some people say six months. No, a year, perhaps you have set up your space to be able to finance that that opportunity, what you're doing. And it could be, you know, you've paid your car payment up for six months. You know, you paid your mortgage up for a year, whatever. You know, um, around the pandemic was a perfect time. We were getting all these stimulus. You know, it was for me, it wasn't like I'm going going on vacation, buying crabs and buying clothes. I didn't care about that. At this point, I'm like, oh, this is another opportunity to fund my business. And so when I got to a space financially to where I can take care of the family financially, I didn't have to depend on anyone that's when I knew, okay, you can do this. Now you're scared, but take the leap and you never know what's going to happen after that. And, and when you do take the leap, I definitely encourage you share, um, share your, share your experience because there's someone else who's ready to leap, but they just don't know how to, you know, they're afraid. And you can say, listen, I was right there. I was scared. I was nervous. wasn't sure what I was going to do, but after I did it, you know, yeah, not every week I'm going to make 5K a week or 6K a week. Yeah, not every week. Some weeks are like, oh, shoot, like Jesus come through, you know, but that's where you're out there. And that team that you outsource, you can say, hey, listen, we're not making this sales. Something's not converting here. What do we need to do? What do we have to change to ensure those funds are coming back in? Because you cannot do it yourself. And I just want to make sure that everyone knows that when you leap, you're leaping with a full business, not trying to be the sales director, the marketing coach, you know, not trying to be uh, damage control. You are a CEO that has now determined who needs to do these tasks in order to keep my business running. And, and at that point, again, once you have the finances in space to where everyone is, is doing their job, <laughs> you've let go and let people do their job because a lot of us do not want to let other people in our businesses because we've been burnt, but you financially pay for the right person. Um, but that, that's, that's the time for you to say, okay, it's time for me to go. No, it all makes sense. And it's funny, you said something earlier about how to, how you save money, which I'm always like, why are the nails always the first to go? Like when you're trying to save money, that's the first thing we cut. But yeah, we got to. Those nails can be expensive and that money saved really can help you and add up. So yeah. moms, you know, if you get your nails done, they look beautiful and everything. It doesn't hurt to like cut deep when you got to cut oh, man. Off the nail budget, uh. right? But I've done that, been there. So when you said that, that kind of hit home. I was like, God, I know yeah. that. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, so you're right. So financially, maybe you have a year ready to go, and then you'll know that you can possibly take the leap. We know that being an entrepreneur, it's like a roller coaster ride. You have some days that are good, some days that are bad. Let me ask you, besides your professional woman escape plan, do you have the, another side hustle? Is that, what, is that the side hustle that got you started that you're so referring to? Nope. So, um, I took for my, my position, um, I was known, um, what I did was actually just create the experience, whether it was typically at that point it was live, you know, so made whoever I was representing at the time, um, virtual events look great or live events or just kind of draw the crowd, um, mm -hmm. uh, mainly for community events. And so, um, I took that talent and I transitioned it into a digital uh, marketing agency. So now I build the websites that people are looking for or the event pages, or um, I build, you know, 
um, the virtual events or even live events. Um, um, so that's that is my business. Like that's what I I'm did for the city. Later. <laughs> we're, just doing, we're working on, and I started to launch it this month, and then I realized we weren't quite ready. Um, but we're doing the Black Parenting Conference. So all you guys that listen, we're doing a Black Parenting Conference. We're hoping to do it the first quarter of next year. I'm not quite ready yet, but I am when I get ready because I realized after I started planning, I wanted to be so much more uh, and um, launch big time. So I'm looking for the first quarter of next year uh, virtual. We're going to do a smaller one and then grow it. But yeah, so I will be talking to you because I need you. I need yes, you. Well, I am here. <laughs> so, so that is my business. My business is in the digital space. Um, the program was just people were asking me, you know, how do I escape? Like, what do I do? And um, outside of your finances, it's also a mental space you need to be in. So, you know, I did start therapy after I lost my child. <clears throat> And after therapy, it allows me to, you know, mentally think about my situations, life, think about everything that is going off, you know, to ensure that I'm mentally healthy. Because as an entrepreneur, you create your schedule. There's no one telling you what this deadline is. There's no one telling you that you got to get up and make these appointments. No one's telling you that. Now, the fun stuff that people show online are, oh, the traveling, the nice cars, or being able to go to lunch with my friends. Okay, that's fun, but the money that you're spending at lunch every day, hanging out with your friends, what? how are you replacing that income? So it was more so me creating my mindset to tell my family, just because you get off early and you're here at one o'clock, my office hours are not over at one o'clock. So don't come plop on the couch behind me and want to tell me your life story for today. I'm at work, you know, creating those boundaries at home with your family because, you know, my mom doesn't, she didn't believe in entrepreneurship. She believed in get the college degree, go to work. You know, that's what everyone believes. So when me leaving my job, it was like, Oh, Lord Jesus, pray for her. We need to go ahead and have her. Um, the, the, <laughs> we need to put some holy water on her. We got to bless her again. She's losing her mind, right? You know, they, they think we're crazy. Like, she's possessed, right? And I'm like, no. God, and I truly believe, I, I talk a lot about this, but I truly believe that we all have this purpose. And the thing about it is, some of us that are back and forth from entrepreneurship to a job, entrepreneurship to a job, is that we're afraid to walk in that purpose. It's not that we don't know what it is. It's just that we're trying to figure out how to walk in that purpose versus step away from the how and go for it, right? Go for it financially set up, mentally prepared, okay? Go for it in that space. You know, without a plan, obviously you're not going to be successful. But if you create that plan, you stick to that plan, and you don't let the non-entrepreneur in your life tell you that this is not going to work, you go to other entrepreneurs. You go to people that are doing what you have done, listening to how they've overcome things. You don't go to, you know, grandma, my sister, my best friend of 17 years and ask her, you know, what do you think about me quitting my job? Because they're not going to see entrepreneurship. They see nine to five. And that's where you have to retrain your mind from a nine to five to I'm a CEO. You know, I can take off three days this week if I want to. You know, the income is there. We're good to go. I got the team in place. I can take off three days. You know what? Today I'm going to go in at 10. You know, and that's hard to transition for considering the fact if you've done that for 20 years, if you've done that for 15 years, yes, it's difficult to be your own boss. It sounds good. Boss babe, boss mom, you know, one, that stuff sounds great until you're in that space and you have to do it. Exactly. Now, you created this whole program to help other women, so you're kind of reaching back, giving back the Professional Women's Escape Plan, and it starts in January online. Why, why just women? Why not the dads, too? Tell me why it's important for that um, to be so, so women, we pretty much already have a fight of our own, um, from uh, careers to our place at home to even sometimes our place within our friendships, within our family. We, we're always fighting for our own space. Like just recently, as of last night, I remember speaking to one of my guy friends and he was just telling me about like all the problems women are and wives are this and this and that. I'm like, but have you ever stopped and asked your wife, how does she feel? Have you ever asked her opinion about something? He was like, no, I just fix it. I just do it. Yeah, but have you ever asked her her opinion? Have you ever heard from her how she feels? For what? I mean, I'm, I'm paying the bills. It's more than just paying the bills. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, you may have done it, but maybe you didn't do the color shade of blue that I wanted to do, you know? So <laughs> I'm stuck with your blue. You know what I mean? But 
women even I even go back to like my great grandmother um and she was just a housewife right she never really did what she wanted to do she lived through her girls you know my mom and my aunts and them you know she lived through that my mom lives through me at times because there's things that she sacrificed to be that woman's role, you know, and there's not really a clearly defined woman's role. You know, we can do a lot. Women can, it's, it's like we're, we're like this creature that can multiply, like can mutate into all types of forces that we need to be to take care of our families, but we forget to do that for ourselves. And so I wanted to really focus on women because our power is amazing when it's ignited. Like when we're lit on fire, the things that we can accomplish, not because our back is against the wall, because I have to make sure the kids are together, but things that we can accomplish based on my purpose, my passion. It's amazing how women can flourish, right? When they're in that space, when they're healthy mentally, when they're healthy financially, when they're thinking clearly enough to make decisions that will affect their children and pretty much become a legacy of their own, that is a beautiful thing for me to see. And that's why I want to cultivate women relationships. Outside of that, typically most men that come and want to work have different motives. They're, they're not really coming to escape. They're coming to have a couple of meetings and then it's like, oh, you're so beautiful. No, listen, listen, honey. I'm not looking, I'm, I'm not looking, I'm not in the online dating world, okay? Like, <laughs> I'm not in that space, okay? Thank you, you know. Um, and I just rather not have to decipher, is this guy serious? Or, you know, is he just kind of just trying to, and I'm sure you've, you've experienced that with guys that are popping your inbox. Oh, beautiful, nice message. Oh, great. And then after a couple amount of times, now they're like, hey, what's your number? Hey, or they send you some pictures and you're like, whoa, like that's not where I'm at. So my ultimate goal is to um, push women to live to the fullest or in the fullest of their potential at some point in their lifetime, because once they feel that, they're not going to go back to accepting anything that's less than what they deserve. Okay. So let's get into the nitty gritty. So tell us about the program. What can people Okay. Expect? Got you. So in the program, the first stage is, um, I call it uh, discovering the GVP or the skill set. So again, GVP is your greatest valuable proficiency. That is that skill set that you can do with your eyes closed. People come to you for it. Like you, you can be last minute procrastinate and still handle that business. Like that is your jam. Okay. That's like riding in traffic, listening to like, that's your jam, right? And so for me, at one point, I thought my jam was um, in the PR space. I thought it was like, oh, okay, I can bring these media networks together. I thought that was my jam. But it was more so when I received the vision of the event or if I received the, um, uh, in, in the political world, if I received, you know, the goals or the metrics for the next five to 10 years, I could put that plan together and execute it, bring the right people in the, in the right places to make it work. So I had to change what that GVP was. And that's where we kind of, we dig deep. We, we go super deep to understand what is your greatest value proficiency. From there, we then see, is it marketable? Can we make money doing this? You know, and if not, then, you know, maybe we got to go back to the table and find out what this GVP is. Once we get that, we go into, I call it the blueprint. The blueprint is setting up the escape. So it's basically setting up, you know, your two years. Some women will say, I wanted to go in a year. And I'm like, well, let's check these finances. So I connect you with one of our finance coaches. Um, this guy, he is actually a male. Um, and I went for a male finance coach because men can be very competitive in that space of finances. And so they will look at your finances to see, you know, and you have to be honest, like, you know, I, I, I tell people, you just got to be honest with where you are. And like, that's the only way our experts can help out. Um, and he also works with the SBA for years. So we break down the finances. And from there, we now determine where are your weaknesses? Where do we need to outsource? We got this now. Let's figure out where we need to outsource, all right? Where we need to get fixed. How are we building up this product? Is this a service that you're offering or is this a product that you're offering? Where are we at? And now which platform are we going to go? Typically, I do I do push those to go online because a brick and mortar business is going to cost you a little bit more to get started than you starting online. Once we got the plan in place, we begin to implement. 
You know, that I'm like that coach on your behind that you're like, please leave me alone. But ultimately, we know we, you want to escape. Throughout this process, though, you also speak with a mindset coach. And your mindset coach is the person that's going to keep you going, right? Keep you out of the corporate mindset. She escaped corporate. Matter of fact, she was fired from corporate, got an amazing severance after she took them to court. And so she speaks on some of the things and trip and, and uh, obstacles she experienced um, as a, uh, in a corporate American, how, how she had to escape. So we stay in that mindset space. And then lastly, once we got the day, you're, you're moving at this point, you're making money, you know, you're starting to, to really get this thing. Yeah. Sometimes you doubt yourself, but you're consistent because we need consistency then we look into scaling and what scaling does is scaling we now automate so we do more stuff on a place to where you're not having to be in front of your computer every day you're learning how to schedule your post out you're learning how to um, be prepared for black friday you know what what products should i have for black friday how do i participate in cyber monday at this point now you're at a space to where you're making consistent money so now we want to leverage what you're doing and we want to push it now to the next level so that is the process of the course. Um, it is a lot of work that you do as a person because when you escape, you're 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 growing, right? You know, you know how you every year in your job you're waiting for that three percent raise, or you're looking at that review that 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 boss is going to give you, right? That is you, right? That's where you are. You are growing as an individual because it's going to take more than looking pretty on Instagram and posting a couple of pictures on Facebook to make a sustainable business, right? So you're turning into a boss, into a CEO. You're really learning the odds and ends of your business. And that includes metrics. It includes data. It includes holding yourself accountable. It includes letting go of a staff member that is not fit for your space. You know, yeah, you may have one red flag, but it, it, if that red flag is affecting your business, Let's have this conversation. Let's train. If the training isn't working, okay, I need to I need to go ahead and replace this. So it's it's about just kind of learning how to transition uh, into that space of a real entrepreneur. Well, this is all great advice. Now, is there a fee for your um, program? Yes. Yeah, so we do have some Black Friday sales going on. And so I would prefer you all check us out next Wednesday. So you go to the website now. It's successwithebonycruise.com. But next Wednesday, um, I'm kind of like giving um, this program almost away. And the reason why I broke down the price a little bit more is because I didn't want to be the crutch as to why you can't get started, right? You know, you're already trying to figure out these finances. So I didn't want to be overpriced to where you can't even get advice. You know, you can't even, um, even, even, even join the program. And so um, Black Friday, I don't, I don't want to put that out. I haven't told the Black Friday discount yet. <laughs> okay, no, no so, worries, no worries. Yeah. So, yeah, so you can um, definitely, um, all my social media um, pages, spaces, um, you can definitely go and grab that, that Black Friday special. Okay. Now, for the people that are watching or are going to watch later, they're looking for some concrete tips. Can you give them three tips they must do when they finally had enough of their job? You said save for a year. That was one good one. Can you give us any more? Yeah, so um, you definitely want to um, control um, your mannerisms at work and how you deal with people. Because when we get fed up at one point, you know, the sister comes out, right? And so we're not taking it. The emails get a little <laughs> snippy, you know, <laughs> the interactions get a little rough, you know. So you want to make sure that you control your mannerisms because ultimately you're building yourself for your, your own job, for your own business. And if every time you're irritated, you're snapping, and you're not going to have a great staff. And so you're really working on your posture, how you're going to position yourself, right? So you definitely want to think about that, um, number two. Number three, I would say um, that I thought about it was more how I was going to position myself when I left. So when I say position, I mean, what was I going to do to position me as an authority in this space? Where people, to, so people could believe, hey, she knows what she's talking about. So in order to position myself, one, I did have to be the example. I had to escape. You know, they're going to like, how is she telling us to leave and she ain't escape? You know? So I had to be the example, but I also had to show how me transitioning, me focusing for two years on this blueprint, how it can... I mean, it's a massive results that you receive when you really focus. So um, think about how you're going to position yourself, you know, make sure you got your finances together and, you know, you got to, you, you just, 
you got to you, you got to make sure that you know what you're going for. And so when someone ticks you off in traffic that morning, when someone pisses you off in your office, you know, I'm only here for a limited time, you know? So it's definitely making sure that you're not getting yourself fired before the time. Um, so you gotta be a little bit quiet about your transition. You can't let everyone know that you're about to transition. So it's like a CN CIA mission impossible thing. The part, that's the part I have a problem with, because I wear my emotions on my sleeve, right? So I remember when I left that job, I told you about what the master's degree situation. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had to do a budget, and it was like a $2 million budget that I had to do every year. And the one person that was holding me up was his mistress, right? Both married. And I knew this, but I couldn't say anything. Right. And she was holding me up on purpose, right? And so he was like, well, if you don't get your budget done in time, now, mind you, my part is... Been, been finished for weeks right it's done but she that part i need to finish my budget the uh, absolutely like the, the, like a puzzle piece like and it's done and he goes if you don't have your budget in time we can't give you that three percent raise they like, like, hold over your head you know mm -hmm. so i was just like what do you think that three percent raise is going to do for me right <laughs> after the taxes <laughs> hit it after the taxes oh, hit it you know it's not really a raise it's like another hundred dollars or something they're like hold this thing in front of you like a carrot and i'm like you're, you're talking ten thousand dollars more, five thousand dollars more. I'll go in there and take the budget right from it, do it myself. I said, otherwise, that that that, that, that just doesn't work for me. It doesn't work, it's right? Not my incentive. He just looked at me like, <laughs> but you know, I was <laughs> mentally ready to go. Like I had already started cleaning out my office. I take they didn't even notice. I started taking pictures down, taking them home. I took my little fridge out of my office, took it home. I took I was taking everything that was mine out of there slowly every week because I knew I was out of there. And when you start, I got to tell you something when you get to, for everyone who's listening, if you want to make a move, this is, this is energy acting, right? But yes. If you want to make a move, start taking things down. If you want to move out of the house you're in, the apartment you're in, start taking the pictures down, start putting things away. Like you're packing and moving your office and guess what yes. will happen? That energy will move you out of that situation. It have, works for me every time, every single time. But you time have to be subtle. To make a change. And, and yes. the reason why you have to be subtle because, <laughs> because women, you know, we are emotional creatures. We can't get away from that. We mm -hmm. we are emotional creatures. But and um, when we're fed up, we're fed up. Like that's like in a in a relationship. Women, I've seen some posts are like, can women cheat and not? When women cheat, we're done. Nine times out of ten, we're kind of over it. You know, some women that have been married for. 30, 40 years. They're like, well, I'm going to stay with them, but I ain't, I'm checked out over here. So I'm going to, me and this little side guy, that's my little side guy. But typically we have mentally checked out. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. we're so done. We're gone, pretty much. Yeah. And so that's how it is in your job. You know, you mentally checked out, but you have to definitely stay consistent in your role you have to per keep performing because your job is your paid university those projects that you're working on are projects that are examples to how you can use these in your business this is what i did here and so this is what i know how to do you know what i mean so you have to stay focused in that space and that's where that mindset coach comes in at because that is it's it's tough trust me it is i agree with you and that's where i thought will fall short with every time because once i'm checked out you, you're gonna hear a little bit more snippiness so i I, I have I gotta say I have a lot of work to do when it comes to that if I ever do this again because once I'm done I'm done. Um, yeah. I have the sm the slickest mouth so that's why I have to kind of watch my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what my dad said would always be the problem with me is my mouth so I understand. Um, we're I know we're over time and I usually do this for a half hour but I just want to make sure we get all this information out if you have a few more minutes I just want to know so entrepreneurship is not for everyone but there are a lot mm -hmm. of times people unhappy people who go to their jobs every day, um, what hope can you give them? So um, I want the, the great resignation, right, that's happening right now because of the pandemic. Um, roughly about 20% of people that are leaving their job are women in starting businesses. And what we're seeing is that women have been able to not only start a business, but be successful with starting it. So the success that or the inspiration that I would tell women right now is right now is your time. It's it is our time to really begin to walk in purpose. I don't know if the universe is on our side. I don't know if God's on. I don't know what's that, but it's shifting to where women are in a space to where we're able to now get some financing. Um, expect minority women are able to get um, coaching. Um, they're able to get in different scholarship programs where it's in, either on Amazon, if you're on Amazon, Facebook. There are a lot of resources out there to help women 
build successful businesses because we are leading the pack when it comes to walking away. And while we're walking away is because of our family, our children, the income we're not getting, the devalue we feel, the lack of time, you know, of doing something that we want to do. And so this is your time. This is your space to really take it seriously as to what you want to do. Okay. Okay. So um, let me ask you this. Um, if they're not entrepreneur minded, then what, what would you suggest if they're unhappy? Should they try to find another job that will make them happy, et cetera? So another job or another man will never make you happy. The first thing that I would say is, <laughs> is finding that happiness within yourself, right? And the way you do that, you know, for me, um, and, and I suggest to women in, in general, uh, especially women of color, is to um, seek out, you know, your therapist. Um, therapy, you know, I did therapy in the la first part of my life after my oldest child lost her dad. You know, we did therapy, but I didn't focus on it as much as I do now. Um, but therapy allows you to release things that we hold inside. It allows you to talk to a neutral party and get feedback from that neutral party. And your therapist is someone that you got to interview. You just can't pop in and say, that I'm going to go to this therapist because they assigned me to this person. I went through two people before I found my therapist, you know. But in order to mentally prepare, you have to start, you know, inserting yourself in those spaces, inserting yourself in spaces around other entrepreneurs, joining, joining entrepreneur groups, you know, not just watching, but being active, asking questions, um, being around people that are entrepreneurs. Is that space not only get your therapist but definitely ensure that you are inserting yourself in the field of people that are already running their own businesses you know that means networking conferences workshops you know uh, books you know i hope we're reading books you know, those things will help you start to start thinking like an entrepreneur and not a nine to fiver okay sounds good sounds good so last thing tell our audience again how to sign up for your program and where to find you all right, so you can sign up. Um, everything's going to be on all my social media platforms. You can go straight to the website. So the website is successwithebonycruise.com. And Ebony, my mom wanted to be different. She took the Y off of Ebony. So it is spelled E-B-O-N-E-C-R-U-Z, successwithebonycruise.com. You can also go to all of my social media outlets, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook. Everything is under Ebony Cruise, E B O N E. C-R-U-Z. Um, and it'll take you to either some messages that I'm talking about, you know, it'll, you, you'll kind of get to be in the space of Ebony and, and see some of the smack I talked throughout the day, but also pushing those to go ahead and live out loud in their purpose. Well, I want to thank you for coming on Back Talk today. So thank you for blessing us with your presence and giving us all this great information. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right, everyone. So thank you for participating and listening to Back Talk. I'm going to do this often and more often on Instagram. Um, but thank you for listening. And it's by Successful Black Parenting Magazine. You can reach us on SuccessfulBlackParenting.com. As you know, if you're on Instagram already, you know who we are and where we are. We have a syndicated podcast that has replays on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, Android, and more, where you can hear older broadcasts. So make sure you check that out. And we have much great content on our website. So we guys need you to engage. The more you engage, the more successful we are as in our namesake. So we really could use that. And until next time, I wish you all the best and much success. Bye-bye. Okay. I got to learn how to stop this thing.